Welcome back for some light entertainment and a warning to look very closely at anything that is advertised on a website because as you're about to find out I had a rather amusing conversation with someone online trying to tell me essentially that what they offer on their website is not really as described. I will explain why I think that because it's my views for any defamation lawyers out there. It's my views based on the conversation that we had which will all make sense in just a moment. But first of all, I'd like to thank all of you yet again for supporting my Just Giving initiative for eggsdirect.co.uk to support British farmers. We are up to £990, which will definitely be put to very good use. In fact, I've already launched a prototype website, so it's going to be a bit of live edit as we go along. I've had a flurry of offers of help from SEO agencies, from web designers, IT consultants and you name it. It's been a fantastic influx of offers for help. So that will hopefully be developed over the next few weeks and I will keep you posted. You guys voted on the logo, which we settled on this one here, which now sits very nicely on the prototype website, which looks a little something like this. However, a bit of entertainment, as I said, for this evening, this morning or this afternoon or wherever you are. First of all, I don't usually respond to comments. However, this one I thought I would because it sort of ties in with my conversation with the web host company, which I'm going to tell you about in just a moment. But this comment also shows how you can jump to conclusions and get things wrong with all respect. So I'm going to read out some of this comment to you. I'm not going to show you who posted it. And in fact, I've removed the comment since because it was just purely insulting. But the comment reads as follows. This looks deep cracked. OK, I'm intrigued. It's scary you are trying to build a website. Just pausing for the cause for a moment. I've been building websites since I was about 17 years old, which is a long time ago. So I've been building websites for a long time for lots of reasons, for lots of people. Companies that I've run over many years have turned over many millions of pounds on these websites. And in fact, our law firm and barristers chambers still run on the websites that I built myself. So still got me intrigued. So let's read on. And which loads can do and then trying to sell them an egg or few. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. The website is designed to sell eggs. So I thought eggsdirect.co.uk was as straightforward as it could possibly get. But uh, perhaps the irony has been lost along the way. Let's read on. But then not considering other things like where are eggs used in ingredients, transport costs, lack of transport. You are simply are simply frightening. And you also promote videos like rising egg prices being blamed on avian flu. Well, I did show you those videos directly from the egg farmers who have the direct experience of what is or is not affecting their sales. Hence the initiative for Eggs Direct and hence I felt this was a good initiative and clearly lots of you think so too because you lots of you have supported my Just Giving campaign. But it gets better. Next, you will likely tell us CV19 never existed and then blame China. Now, clearly this person doesn't watch my channels very often because I've on occasion mentioned my dear wife's cooking channel, which is Easy Chinese Cooking. It doesn't take too much of a stretch of the imagination to realize, and especially if you've ever Googled me, that you'll realize my wife is Chinese. So I don't think this person would have made this comment had they actually done any kind of research at all. But anyway, let's read on. Hey, that would be interesting. How many clothes, garments, shoes, textiles you wearing from China or Taiwan? Well, so we've moved away from the eggs now. Um, now apparently we're moving on to clothing and all that sort of stuff. Now I'm not going to debate what things are made where and what prices are paid for them and whether it's fair and all of that kind of stuff. In fact, the only connection, the only reasonable connection it has with this whole conversation is the reasonable price of what is paid for these things. And if this person had actually watched the initial video, I was talking about the fairness of prices paid for certain goods because my initiative is clearly to help to pay a fair price for produce. So anyway, I'm not going to read the rest of the comment. It does go on a bit further, but I thought that might be entertaining just so that you can see just how wrong sometimes you can get things if you don't know the background facts or about whom you are speaking and things of that nature. 
Anyway, let's get back to the other point that I was going to talk about, which was I was obviously up very late into the evening looking for hosting providers for this website, for eggsdirect.co.uk, because I'm a person that will look ahead, not just for the next week or two. I'm looking ahead so that the server will be able to cope with traffic, with transactions and sales and all of this kind of stuff, because one never knows how much this can grow. So I would like to ensure that it can have longevity. And for anyone that is doubting any of that, I've had businesses in the e-commerce space for probably 25 years or so, as I previously said, turning over millions of pounds in that space, having built all of those websites myself. I've even been to the degree of building servers from the command line up myself, but in the modern day, it is very often better to buy or pay for software as a service, SaaS, as many of you will know it as, which is a managed solution for various different platforms. On this particular occasion, I was looking at WordPress. Now, I haven't decided WordPress to begin with at the moment. I'm going with uh, one of the top Wix platforms. But at the time, I was looking at WordPress. Now, WordPress can, for those of you that don't know, WordPress can have a single site or a multi-site setup. Multi-site simply means you can have more than one site resting on the same software, but because some people had mentioned that there might be other products direct that come from farms, along with eggs direct, I thought a multi-site might be the way to go. So I was looking at software as a solution providers as a managed WordPress solution. Now I'm not going to name and shame, and that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to read very carefully about what's being offered and to question, to ask these questions, can it do this and will it do that and so on and so forth. So the online pricing structure has three or four, in fact, five or six different tiers, but let's just say I'm going with one roughly in the middle without giving the game away too much, which is sold as an e-commerce solution. E-commerce meaning making sales online, where revenue is involved. That will become important for later on in the story. Now, looking down at the options for this e-commerce solution, one of them was labeled professional. Now, professional should really ring out as being more than just a startup. In fact, the lower package is called startup. And there's one I think called entry, but certainly one I'm looking at is called startup. So professional, you may reasonably infer is a step ahead of the startup solution and is a professional solution. That's sort of what it says that it does. So I thought I need to have this conversation about whether or not this professional solution will support multi-site because I want the longevity of being able to add on sites in case the farmers say that they want to do something else direct.co.uk and build that into the same site so they can all be linked together. So I strike up a conversation with their sales support technician, whatever they were, and I asked them the question, does this include multi-site? And I even put in brackets so that I can be clear about what I mean. Multi-site as in three separate domains, but still counts as one against the plan, as in one website against the plan. So the professional plan should allow you to have multiple websites. But I'm trying to ensure that if I've got three websites as a multi-site running against the one website plan, that it will still allow all of those three to run if you catch my drift. Anyway, so the technician who will call J for anonymity says multi-site is not included on the entry level startup plan. What I can do for you is get you in touch with a platform specialist and they'll be able to go over all the options, including multi-site. Now, this is a key feature for the whole conversation. This J was desperate to get me in touch with one of their platform specialists rather than buy off the website because the website had prices on it. You could buy now, you could just go through, get it set up, apparently one click setup and all the rest of it, which most of these software as a service generally do. Now I replied to say that I wasn't looking at the startup plan. I was actually looking at one above that. And then he says, fantastic. We would love to help you out with your shop. Are you available for a call with the specialist? It's typically a lot easier that way. Now, I don't really see that it's a lot easier than just clicking and buying on the website. I just wanted very simple questions answering. But nonetheless, I reply to say, are you able to answer this firstly? The response came back to say that it does not include multi-site. 
And I again re reiterate that I'm not looking at the basic plan, I'm looking at one above that. GA replies to say you can add multi-site on that plan. However, typically with a multi-site, especially being attached to an e-commerce shop, we are going to recommend more of a business tier isolated solution. We take a consultative approach, blah, blah, blah. I reply to say, I'm looking at the professional plan. Is that not a business tier? Jay replies to say that the plans on our webpage are a multi-tenant shared solutions. With an e-commerce shop with multi-site, I would recommend an isolated resource solution. Let's get you in touch with a specialist and they'll be able to explain the difference. Now, I know what the difference is. One is a shared solution. A shared solution being lots of people are using the same resources. A dedicated solution meaning just one site, you or your site. So all of them are your sites and nobody else's. Now, given this was late at night, I didn't really want to jump on the phone. So I replied to say that I would like to review them online, please. Jay replies, it can completely understand that. At this point, I thought I was talking to a robot, but actually I don't think I was. I think it was tweaked just enough to be an actual person, but nonetheless. However, this is your online shop, usually super crucial to your overall business, and we want to make sure we fit you for the most suitable plan so that you have a great experience on our platform. We want to help, a specialist can do just that. I replied, so you don't have the pricing available online, because by this point, I get the feeling that he's trying to sell me something that the website doesn't show. Jay replies, our business tier solutions are built by our engineering team. This is what's so wonderful about this company, etc., etc." I reply to say, with respect, I don't want a long phone call. I just want a simple pricing solution, which I thought your website offers. Yet now you're saying professional isn't a business suitable solution. Then why is it called professional? So because I was a bit confused by this, I say, isn't that a little misleading? Because I don't know what you think, but if you are buying something that is labeled up as a professional solution, it should be a professional solution rather than an entry solution, which they had, and they called it startup. Jay replies again to reiterate a point that is already made to say that solution is a multi-tenant shared solution, where you are sharing the resources with typically one to 200 other websites, another website can affect your business. So there's an admission that their own provisions can be affected by other websites, which is not unusual, but nonetheless, it's a straight out admission from Jay here. He goes on, thus, whenever revenue is directly tied to a website, remembering that this is an e-commerce solution in the first place, that's how it's advertised as a professional e-commerce solution, we are always going to recommend a business tier isolated solution. So I'm just going to pause there for a moment because to reiterate, he says, Whenever revenue is directly tied to a website, we are always going to recommend a business tiered solution, which remember is not the one on the website. Although the one on the website says that it's an e-commerce solution, which is obviously tied to revenue because that's how revenue is generated. It's e-commerce, revenue is generated online. So I'm just very sorry to be the lawyer about this, but if a website is advertising a professional e-commerce solution, which is obviously revenue driven websites, but then their sales operative says, and I quote, whenever revenue is directly tied to a website, we are always going to recommend a business tier isolated solution, i.e. not the one on the website. They are always going to recommend something else. In one very strict, narrow sense, that's probably just about okay, because if they recommend something better, Again, being the lawyer, being his advocate now, I would say that's just about okay. However, I do think that the website is somewhat misleading if it says that it's a professional solution for e-commerce and yet they wouldn't recommend it. They would recommend something else. So I reply to say, so you're outright saying that you don't recommend your own professional solution because it's going to be affected by other websites it shares the host with. Jay comes back really trying now, says no, I said, when revenue is directly tied to a website, we are going to recommend a business tier isolated solution so that you mitigate the risks of being on, on a shared solution so that you can ensure that you capture 100% of the revenue. 
Now, 100% of the revenue is never possible, but that also implies that their other solutions are going to lose revenue somehow more than a business tiered solution would, which suggests that their normal ones, the professional one, fails somehow. Anyway, I think I'm overanalyzing now. I've already by this point decided that he's blatantly not recommending the website solution, which, which I was looking at, to be fair, because it looked okay. Now we're talking about four or five hundred pounds a year here for a solution like this. So obviously I'm doing some due diligence. So clearly I'm putting some time into this at my own time and expense. This was about 11 p.m. last night, by the way, before I finished dealing with some of this stuff. As some of you may have noticed, because I know that at least 28 of you or so went on to that website yesterday evening to have a quick look because the prototype is now live. It's just not with this company that I'm talking about now. Anyway, Jay has one or two more attempts to get me on the phone with a specialist and asks whether I'm still likely to consider their business tier option. I said, leave it with me, I'll take stock, but I was ready to pay for the professional e-commerce, but now he suggests that they always recommend something else. That doesn't fill me with confidence with the professional tier for e-commerce. So this one I didn't go with, but I did save the conversation so that I can bring it to you as a bit of entertainment for my experience yesterday evening looking for another hosting provider for this. So there it is. This is just one of the smashing pieces of this excellent journey where I'm shelling out some time. And uh, thank you all for the puns in the comment section beneath the videos, by the way. They are most entertaining. I've enjoyed reading those and even getting involved with some of those. Just make sure nobody cracks under pressure and feels the need to tread on shells around this topic. We will discuss it openly and whisk it into a fury and scramble to make this work. So I hope that's been interesting. We will make some progress on this in the next few weeks. Thank you once again to all of you that have supported it, all of you that have emailed in to assist. We've even had an SEO agency who's offered to do some written content to boost the SEO search engine optimization for the website to get it found, to get it working. I'm just very touched. I'm humbled by the amount of people that have uh, supported this initiative. So hopefully this will be but the first of the Black Belt Barrister community, you guys, initiatives to help bring things to fruition. And with that, I thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and subscribe and I'll see you next time.